Okay, so welcome today to virtual Camp Earthways. Um, today we're actually going to be speaking with Riley from Straight Up Solar. She's a solar associate and market marketing coordinator over there and she's going to tell us a little bit today about solar energy, how solar panels work, and why they're a great alternative if you're looking to be a little bit more sustainable. So take it away, Riley. Great, thanks Maggie. So let's jump in and let's talk about solar energy. So maybe you've seen solar panels before that look like this. And maybe you've wondered how do they actually produce electricity and how do they fit on a home such as my home and how can they help me produce a environment that is healthier for our planet. So first let's get started and let's talk about how solar panels produce electricity. So these solar panels are all comprised of individual solar cells. And let's talk about how solar cells create electricity. So what will happen is that a electron from the sun called a photon will come in through the sunlight and it will reach the panel. And if you take the panel and you cut it in half, it will kind of look like this. It looks like a four layered sandwich. And the top layer of the sandwich is this non-reflective glass. The second layer in the sandwich, this light blue layer is silicon that also has phosphorus in it. And the phosphorus gives the silicon a negative charge. The third layer in our solar panel sandwich is the silicon is this dark blue and it's silicon that also has boron in it. And the boron gives the silicon a positive charge. And the last layer in our solar panel sandwich is this plastic or metal back sheet, which everything rests on. So how it works is that these electrons called photons from the sun will come in and they will go through the, gr the glass because it's non-reflective and it reaches this a phosphorus silicon layer that's negatively charged. And what happens is this negatively charged layer will accept that electron because a negative uh, charge likes to draw in an electron. So let's say now that there is one extra electron in this light blue layer, but the sunlight is still hitting the panel, which means that there are more photons coming in to the solar panel. And another photon comes in and kicks out that first electron down into this layer, the third layer, the silicon and boron layer that has a positive charge. And this positively charged layer doesn't really want to accept an extra electron, but it will for a moment. So what happens is this extra electron from the top layer when it gets booted down here to the bottom layer, this bottom layer not really wanting to accept it will kick it back up to the top layer. And what happens is this electron will bounce around from the layers going from the top to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom. And what it does is it creates a flow of electricity. So let's go over that again. The photon from the sun will come in through sunlight and reach this top layer. But when another photon comes in, that first photon is gonna be kicked to the bottom and will bounce around the layers, creating a flow of electricity like this. And that is how a solar panel creates electricity. So let's talk about if there is enough sunlight to produce enough electricity. So when we think of Miami, Florida, we probably think of summer vacation and the beach and the ocean, and we probably think of lots and lots of sunlight and solar energy. But what about St. Louis? Do we think about St. Louis having a lot of solar energy? Maybe we don't, but St. Louis actually gets 92% of the amount of sunlight that Miami, Florida does. Now let's draw a comparison. This is a map of Germany, and you can see on this map that Germany doesn't get a whole lot of sunlight. 
And we can see that by comparing Germany to Alaska. And these two maps look very similar. In Alaska, we tend to think of Alaska as being cold, snowy, not having a lot of sunlight, and therefore not having a lot of solar energy. But Germany, which has the amount of sunlight comparable to Alaska, is actually leading the world in the amount of solar energy it produces. So Germany is powered 50% by solar energy, even though it only gets the same amount of sunlight as Alaska. So that goes to show that in St. Louis, we do get enough sunlight to produce a substantial amount of electricity. So let's talk about how solar panels work on the home. Those electrons called photons that come in from the sun, they will create that flow of electricity in the solar panel. And that flow of electricity will travel down into this device called an inverter. And what an inverter does is it takes this direct current electricity called DC power and transform, transforms it into alternating current electricity called AC power. And AC power is what we use in our homes. Then that energy, that AC electricity, will go from the inverter to your electric meter. And the electric meter is kind of the brain behind the system. The electric meter will communicate where the solar energy needs to go. So let's say you're in your home and you turn on a light. You flip a switch and you turn on a light. If your solar panels are on and your electric meter senses that light bulb you just turned on needs electricity, it will bring in that solar energy to power that light bulb. But let's say you aren't home and let's say all the lights are off, but your solar panels are still producing electricity. The electric meter will sense that the home doesn't need that extra electricity at the moment and will send it out onto your local electric grid through the power lines where someone else can use that solar electricity. So let's talk about how solar can work for you during the nighttime or when the sun isn't out. When the sun is out during the day, if your system produces more electricity than your home needs, it will send it out to your power company through the power lines. And the power company will say, hey, thanks for the extra energy. And then at night, when your home isn't being powered by your solar panels because the sun isn't out, your electric company will remember that you sent over that extra electricity during the day. And to say thank you, they will send you back that extra electricity that your solar panels produced. So during the day, when your system is producing more energy than it needs, it will send it to your electric company. And at night, when your panels aren't producing solar energy, your electric company will send back that extra power that you created. So let's talk about the environmental benefits that solar can offer. So an average home with a 7.5 kilowatt system will produce enough clean energy per year uh, compared to if you were getting your electricity from uh, your normal electric company. And that would be equivalent to avoiding almost 175,000 pounds of coal from being burned, or avoiding almost 400 barrels of oil from being burned, or growing a little over 4,000 tree seedlings for 10 years, so that's a 10-year-old tree, or removing 34 passenger cars from the road every year. So you can see that even the average home with a system can have quite uh, a great amount of environmental benefit. And I'd just like to wrap up and let everyone know that we all have the power to make a better world through choosing solar energy to create a healthier environment for us all. Okay, thank you, Riley, for sharing all that good information with us. I love hearing about the solar power sandwich. It really makes it easy to understand.
Um, so we really both hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about solar power today and how it works and why it's important for sustainability. Um, we want you to be able to take a chance to actually go outside and capture your own solar power by creating your own solar oven. Um, so check for some ways that you can do that on our website. Um, and we hope you're able to enjoy all the goodies you get from that. So thank you so much, Riley, for joining us. We hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.